Starship splashdowns have been a familiar sight in Starship launches ever since the giant rocket first took flight. However, you won't be seeing this much longer, as Starship Flight 8 will be the last time SpaceX does this. Why? What is the significance of this final Starship splashdown, and how is it different from previous landings? Let's find out in today's episode. But first, we need your support. This is my new space channel, and we're on the way to reaching the first 500 subscribers. Your support means the universe to us. Hit subscribe now and get ready for an out-of-this-world adventure. You won't be disappointed. Thank you very much. SpaceX's Starship Flight 8 is scheduled for launch on the afternoon of February 28th. This flight will be a crucial milestone for the future development of the Starship program as a newer version of the vehicle is set to undergo testing. Moreover, this will be the final flight in which SpaceX allows Starship to splash down in the ocean before attempting to catch it, marking the beginning of a new era not just for Starship but for the entire space industry. Many may wonder why SpaceX isn't attempting to catch Starship on this flight, while they have already performed catch attempts with Super Heavy in the past two flights. To be honest, the heat shield issue for SpaceX remains a significant challenge when it comes to the spacecraft's re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. Even Elon Musk has acknowledged this. Observing previous Starship flights, we have witnessed firsthand the somewhat inconsistent performance of heat shields, particularly at strategic locations that endure the highest temperatures during re-entry. Remember Starship Flight 4, where one of SpaceX's four flaps melted due to missing or burned out heat shield tiles? After that flight, SpaceX ramped up its workforce to replace and upgrade the heat shields. While there has been progress in maintaining the rocket's structural integrity before it hits the ocean, the reliability required for SpaceX to confidently attempt a bold catch with the tower is still uncertain. Nearly all prior Starship flights have resulted in explosions upon ocean impact. While SpaceX hasn't publicly disclosed much about these incidents, the possibility of Starship automatically self-destructing is plausible. It wasn't until the recent Flight 6 that we saw a clear image of Starship making a vertical water landing before tipping over into the ocean. Despite small fires that eventually caused the body to snap, SpaceX managed to retrieve components from the rocket and bring them back to their facilities, demonstrating its structural integrity even after a water landing. In addition to the ongoing issues with heat shield reliability, which makes SpaceX hesitant to attempt a towering catch for recent and possibly upcoming Starship launches, ocean splashdowns during test flights also offer several advantages. The first and foremost benefit is human safety. One of these tests is the belly flop maneuver, which involves the spacecraft flipping over and re-entering the Earth's atmosphere with its belly facing downwards. This allows for a controlled descent and landing, similar to how a skydiver would land. To simulate the conditions of this maneuver, SpaceX has decided to drop the Starship into the sea. This will allow them to test the spacecraft's ability to control its descent and landing, as well as its structural integrity when subjected to the forces of re-entry. This is because the orbital landing test flights did not start with nearly straight up and down trajectories like the first prototype test flights. Even those trajectories were much more difficult than those of the engines. When the spacecraft was flying sideways and using full orbital speed. To be safe on re-entry, you need to re-enter the atmosphere somewhere on the other side of the ocean. If something goes wrong, it will cause problems for the experimental spacecraft. Thus, the new thermal protection system will put us in the same position that we found ourselves in during the 2003 Space Shuttle Columbia disaster. Where spacecraft barrels have leaked all over the United States, we don't want this to happen again, and they'll try to dismantle this orbital spaceship prototype. After flying well thought out in the middle of the Indian Ocean, the rotating part of the plane passes over the ocean on a trajectory that ensures that all the debris will fall into the ocean if something goes wrong. Furthermore, the wisdom behind opting for a water landing for Starship encompasses more than merely averting human impact and collecting data. The nurturing embrace of water offers a gentle cushion, a welcoming medium that absorbs a significant portion of the impact forces. It's the secret behind the concept of a soft landing. Hence, 
When Starship descends into the sea, should the descent be controlled and guided, it's nearly certain that the structural integrity of Starship will remain largely intact, enabling SpaceX to swiftly facilitate its recovery. The innate softness of the ocean functions akin to a natural shock absorber, shielding the spacecraft from the unyielding forces of re-entry. Another pivotal reason SpaceX refrains from catching Starship mid-air, akin to Mechazilla, is tied to the preservation of ground infrastructure safety. Candidly speaking, Starship remains within the realm of experimentation, necessitating further tests before it aligns with Elon Musk's envisioned blueprint. The consequences could be extremely dangerous if SpaceX attempts to catch Starship or Super Heavy mid-air, without being certain about the alignment and coordination between the rocket and the catching tower. This was evidenced when SpaceX engineers informed Elon Musk that they almost had to abort the attempt to catch Super Heavy. Just one second before the catch, the launch team nearly lost control of the rocket, which could have led to a hazardous situation near the launch tower. For example, any additional hardware around the launch pad could face significant damage if compromised. This concern was highlighted during the Starship Flight 6 mission, where SpaceX meticulously guided Super Heavy to land in the ocean after detecting disruptions in communication between the rocket and the catching tower due to a damaged antenna at the tower's peak. Given how carefully SpaceX managed the situation with Super Heavy, it is clear that attempting a catch with Starship at this stage is not yet necessary. It's fair to assert that perhaps SpaceX's confidence in landing Falcon 9 prompted several iterations wherein both vehicles autonomously navigated a shared path using grid fins and thrust vectors, ensuring their return to the landing site. However, there's little doubt that Starship is an entirely different beast, a behemoth that is bound to yield surprises. Just consider the inaugural launch of Starship with Super Heavy, ignited by the fiery combustion of 33 Raptor engines, generating nearly 17 million pounds of thrust, resulting in a considerable excavation on the launch pad. Additionally, SpaceX is exploring the augmentation of engine thrust to nearly 19 million pounds with larger versions of Starship. However, the ocean splashdown of Starship will end with Flight 8 as SpaceX plans to catch Starship starting with Flight 9. Truly, with SpaceX's remarkable advancements, the company needs just one more Starship launch before it can fully recover all flight hardware intact. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel now. Space Zone will always bring you the latest and most exciting space news every day. Now, let's get back to the content. The ambitious Starship program is now aiming for another milestone with Flight 9, as indicated in a recent filing with the Federal Communications Commission, FCC. This filing reveals that Flight 9 is planned to be a fully orbital mission, marking a significant step forward in the development of the world's most powerful launch vehicle. Even more exciting is the possibility that this flight could feature the first attempt to catch the second stage Starship, the upper stage of the rocket, using the launch tower's innovative chopstick arms at Starbase, Texas. This would build on SpaceX's earlier successes in catching the Super Heavy booster and push the boundaries of reusable rocket technology further. The orbital profile for Flight 9 suggests that after launching from Starbase, the Super Heavy booster will separate from the Starship upper stage, likely returning to either a soft water landing in the Gulf of Mexico or a catch attempt at the launch site depending on mission parameters and regulatory approval. Meanwhile, the Starship's second stage will continue into orbit, potentially circling the Earth before deorbiting. The FCC filing hints at the option for this upper stage to return to Starbase for a towering catch, a maneuver that would require pinpoint precision and control, given the vehicle's re-entry from orbital velocity a far greater challenge than the booster catches achieved in prior flights. Catching the second stage Starship is a critical piece of SpaceX's vision for rapid reusability. Unlike the booster, which returns shortly after launch from a suborbital trajectory, the upper stage must endure the intense heat and forces of atmospheric re-entry from orbit. Successfully catching it would eliminate the need for landing legs, reduce turnaround time between missions, and lower costs key factors in SpaceX's goal of making spaceflight routine and affordable.
The company has already demonstrated its ability to catch the Super Heavy Booster twice in three attempts, most notably during Flight 5 in October 2024. But extending this capability to the second stage would be a groundbreaking achievement. Flight 9's timeline remains fluid, hinging on the outcome of Flight 8, currently targeted for February 28, 2025, at 5 p.m. Texas time, and subsequent regulatory approvals. Posts on X and various reports suggest that the FCC license for Flight 9 could be activated as early as mid-March 2025, assuming Flight 8 progresses smoothly. This rapid cadence reflects SpaceX's iterative approach, where each test flight builds on the last, refining hardware and techniques. The filing's mention of a possible return to launch site, RTLS, for the Starship upper stage has sparked enthusiasm among space enthusiasts, as it aligns with Elon Musk's long-term vision of a fully reusable system capable of supporting missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. A successful orbital flight with a second-stage catch could accelerate SpaceX's plans for satellite deployments, lunar landings under NASA's Artemis program, and even point-to-point -point travel on Earth. So, which tower will be responsible for Starship's return? Of course, Tower B. Tower B, officially the second launch tower under construction at Starbase, is indeed shaping up to be a key player in SpaceX's Starship program. While the original tower, often just called the Launch Tower or Tower A by fans, has been the workhorse for early flights, including the dramatic booster catches starting with Flight 5 in October 2024, Tower B is being built to scale up operations. The consensus among observers, based on updates from SpaceX and posts on X, is that Tower B will eventually become the primary launch and catch tower for Starship missions, including orbital flights like the one planned for Flight 9. The reasoning here is practical. Tower A has been heavily modified and stress-tested through the first eight flights, serving as a prototype of sorts while SpaceX perfected the chopstick catch mechanism and integrated the massive Super Heavy booster and Starship stack. Tower B, located at a second launch pad nearby, incorporates lessons learned from those earlier tests. It's designed to handle the full scope of Starship's operational needs, launching, catching both the Super Heavy Booster and potentially the second-stage Starship, and doing so with greater efficiency and reliability. Photos and footage from Starbase show Tower B's construction progressing steadily, with its own set of catch arms and a more robust structure tailored to the mature Starship system. Now, Tower A is still operational and could handle the mission, especially if Flight 8 uses it successfully. However, if Tower B is ready, and some ex-posts suggest it might be nearing completion by March 2025, it could debut as the real Starship Tower for this orbital flight and the second stage catch attempt. Elon Musk has hinted in the past that the second tower would take over as the program shifts from testing to operational flights, so Flight 9 could be a handover moment. Why call Tower B the real one? It's likely a nod to its purpose-built design and future-proofing. Tower A was a test bed, patched together and adapted as SpaceX iterated rapidly. Tower B, by contrast, is the next evolution, optimized for the long haul, potentially supporting multiple launches per month as Starship ramps up for NASA contracts, Starlink deployments, and Mars missions. That said, SpaceX isn't abandoning Tower A anytime soon it'll likely stick around for redundancy and testing. Tower B is poised to be the definitive Starship Tower eventually, and Flight 9 might just be its big moment, especially if that second stage catches on the table. We'll know more once SpaceX locks in the details post-Flight 8. Keep an eye on Starbase. Things move fast there. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.